Welcome back to the 19th and hopefully, probably last video for now about my dual engine control lever IP68 project. In the previous video, we finished the big parts uh, by putting on these big radii here and some more details. Cut here, link in the description. Now it's time to put everything together and to adjust it a little. Enjoy! We start by something trivial like gluing <laughs> the magnet into our shaft. Uh, yeah, there's another shaft and another magnet, but I've learned to keep these magnets <laughs> separated, okay? And my super glue I want to use for that purpose is probably super glued by now. Uh, give me a second. Okay, fresh tube. Uh, let's try that again. So we apply some super glue here and please. Ah, there it is. Ample amount. Doesn't matter. <coughs> And then I wet my magnet a little bit. And beforehand I uh, cleaned everything with alcohol, just in case. Just a wee bit of moisture. So we drop that in here until it's nicely settled. And now I have some super glue <coughs> on my fingers. Yeah, uh, nothing to worry about. And uh, we do the same with the uh, second one and let that one here cure. Is that really all in? Sorry, out of camera. Yeah, looks good. Okay, next one. Where's my magnet? Here it is and this time I'll Put some moisture on it beforehand. Maybe not that much. And uh, the idea with the moisture is because there's basically no way that any air can get in here after the magnet is in and super glue needs some air to cure. So Let's close that up real good. Yeah, looks good too. And now we wait. Now things get a little bit more interesting. So yeah, the whole assembly with the shaft and at least uh, the first plunger for our zero position on the shaft and uh, side piece and lever. So I marked on the side pieces, I don't know if you can see that, <laughs> which uh, direction should point to the front, just in case I have to disassemble the whole thing again. And I want my uh, zero position indent here to be at the back. Then we just drop in a plunger. Then we drop in our stainless steel spring with the <laughs> galvanic isolation nipple here on top. And that didn't go through at all. Well, the question is, why isn't my plunger going through? Ah, okay. There it is. So let's plunge that a little bit back. And just ensure that, yeah, 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 it's moving freely. There was just a little bit of dirt left. So, <clears throat> plunger back, shaft inserted. Uh, we're on the right direction. Yeah, that's the back. Spring inserted. And our grub screw at last. And now we should feel already. Yeah, that's locked in. I can wiggle it a little bit around, but not much. If I increase the pressure even more, just a little bit of wiggle. Okay, now 
<clears throat> the lever, which is, is this a zero position, should be up right here. And oh, let me change the perspective. Okay, that's somewhat better. Uh, now I don't, ha <laughs> I almost forgot the washer here. And yeah, we're still in the zero position. And then we have our lever and that lever should be exactly upright. And then if everything is in order. We can fasten. Sorry, it's not that easy. We can fasten our C clamp at the bottom. Let's try that again. Make sure it's really upright. Okay, not optimal yet. I need to fiddle around with it. Sorry. Okay, now I like it. And the zero position pressure could be a little bit greater. So I give it half a turn more. Yeah. That's now very definitive. Okay. Um, yeah, and of course, uh, <laughs> this should be parallel. Wonderful. Uh, I do that a second time off camera. So far, so good. So this is really, sorry, working very well. And you can actually hear uh, the plunger snapping in. Uh, give me a second. Very nice. And I even have now right off the bat uh, almost enough friction here. Uh, but we put in the uh, other plunger and the other spring anyway. So the second plungers and they are, are yeah a very tight fit but yeah that's by design but they go through to the axle uh, to the shaft my springs or go they through to the shaft mm, I don't think so there's something here in the hole that's stopping them. But snap, we can overcome that. Uh, my best guess <clears throat> is that this is the transition between where I have threaded the hole and where the hole is actually not threaded. There is a little bit of uh, yeah, material there. But now <clears throat> everything goes in quite easy. Two more grab screws. That one is a little bit off. So let me use another one. Yeah, these small nylon grab screws, you cannot always expect uh, them to be perfect on dimensions. Okay, that's better. I'm bubbling, I know. Very nice. I mean, I cannot film the feeling here, obviously. Ah, oh, things are looking good. Okay, next step. And that would be getting the electronics in. And uh, yeah, I have also here a marker, which is the front. But first, uh, this could be critical. Maybe I have to shorten these nylon screws here. Uh, let's remove the strain relief. There are my electronics. Oh, 
I need the right nylon screw and some more nylon washers for that one. I put you and the camera a little bit out of the way so I can actually work around here. So this is a tricky operation. And yeah, that washer here on the top, that's purely cosmetical. And now I have to hit the hole. <laughs> which I obviously did. Uh, let me screw with the left hand. Not that I like it, but so you can see at least something. You, we're in. Could adjust the position of the board just a little bit. Yep. That's it. And now I have to fiddle around <clears throat> with the cable, which should in theory be quite easy because the cable is 4.7 millimeters in diameter and the slot I milled here is five millimeters. But if you turn, yeah, bend the cable and I'm bending it here probably beyond specification, it gets wider. So remind me next time if I want to make a slot for a 4.7 millimeter cable uh, to slot out here at least a six millimeter slot. Uh, but the good thing is that we probably don't need to shorten our screws here of the strain relief. So I'm really at the bottom of the threaded hole with these screws, but yeah, <clears throat> I think uh, the strain relief is quite okay. There is nothing moving. The only thing left to do now is to screw on these side pieces uh, and we're done. Okay, now something is missing here when I really want to play around with that thing. Uh, give me a moment. I just screwed some pieces of wood. Yeah, not these big pieces, but small pieces at uh, the bottom with one screw each only. Uh, yeah, I'm relying on friction here because <clears throat> the whole project relies a whole lot on friction. And uh, one piece is standing over a little bit here. So I can clamp the whole assembly at the edge of my desk and yeah, really work it. and. It feels good. It's not completely smooth and there is admittedly a little bit of wiggle here at the zero positions, but otherwise it's nice. Now the question arises, is the electronic still working? And we're just looking at these two numbers here. These are the angle readings. And if I move that one here, yeah, obviously. Left and right are <clears throat> mixed up, but uh, that's another issue. And we have a little bit of crosstalk to the other side. Not much, just a little bit. Okay, anyway, and the other side, yeah. That's working nicely too. Uh, let me try something else. Okay, I just put up here the serial monitor uh, and just the two values for our angles here. And yeah, I mean, of course, nothing is calibrated now. And we basically have <clears throat> if you remember the A1335 Hall sensor series, the details, we have a short stroke application here. But anyway, it's working. <laughs> 
Yeah, and the zero position wiggle here is really, it's negligible. We need to filter that out in software. But yeah, <laughs> I'm happy. That's it for today. We come <laughs> quite away from our initial, uh, yeah, functional, but uh, 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 Lego Technic models here. And uh, don't forget about the little guy <laughs> until we arrived here. 19 installments, 19 weeks of work here on the POM and the aluminum. And it's not perfect, but it's working. And that's the main thing for me. And I guess next time uh, we'll back to programming the hall sensors in here. Because, as I mentioned, this is now a short stroke application. So we no longer turn a full 360 degrees, but we have here, um, I can't really remember it, uh, plus minus 30 degrees or something, or uh, plus minus 60 degrees, plus minus 60 degrees, almost. So yeah, <clears throat> till then, uh, bye.